hell do you think you're doing? Seneca, I, I wrote you a letter and packed my bags and came to New York just so we wouldn't have to do this. Please go away. Not till I understand what's going on. My darling, if you don't understand now, then you haven't been paying attention. Now, I, I think I should warn you. I canceled an experiment. I, uh, I skipped a lecture and I walked out on a survey just to get here. Now, I am not in the mood for sarcasm. I want an explanation. Read the letter. The letter is an essay on the blighted promise of your medical career. I want to know why my wife walked out on me. Not walked out, Seneca. Gave notice. You asked me to leave Mount Royal to come back to New York and do my work. Which I have done every six months for the past three years. I told you I'd leave when I could. Which has been your answer every six months for the past three years. But you did not mention that you were prepared to go without me. Would it have made any difference? All right. All right. You made your point. But I can't throw 18 months' work out of the window. I'll come on home, and I'll wrap it up as fast as I can, and we'll figure out some way of coming back east. I am back east. And I am home. You cannot make an arbitrary decision about our life. Seneca, that's what this is all about. It isn't our life. It's your life. It's your marriage. It's your needs, and your convenience, and your work. And it has been for the past six years. Well, I don't have any more time to invest in the life of Seneca Bolak. It's my turn now. Miss Mars, you can take a break now. Wish there were more I could do. Thanks for what you've done. Where's Maeve? I sent her home to have supper with Dee and the baby. Little John <laughs> steadies Maeve, and Maeve steadies Dee and you. Maeve steadies me. I looked at her in the emergency room while they were working on Frank. You know what crossed through my brain? That afternoon that Faith swallowed that balloon? I haven't thought about that in years. I looked up from the chessboard, and there on the other side of the room, my four-year-old daughter was turning blue. And before I could get my feet out from under me, Maeve appeared out of nowhere. Faith was sitting in her lap, and Maeve was holding up a, a scrap of red balloon and asking Faith if she wouldn't prefer it with bread and butter. And then uh, Faith had a cup of tea with honey, and you had four fingers of Irish whiskey neat. I remember that very well. Doesn't seem so long ago, does it? No, he doesn't. Ed. Yeah. Is, is Frank gonna make it? I don't know. I wish I could. I, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know exactly what his chances are. It's hard being patient, Ed. I don't like loose ends. I don't like not knowing what's going to happen. I'm at the, the point now where I, well, I have to know a few things. I, I have to know what's happened here. How Frank fell down the stairs. Yeah, what was he doing in the hospital to begin with? And then and where did that $6,500 come from anyway? Well, I have to tell you, the hospital's fairly interested in where those $6,500 went. I should think they would be. No, no, it's not a question of liability. I mean, the money was counted and found by the, char the nurse in charge of the ER. She put it in the file with the rest of Frank's things. But a couple of hours later, when uh, Bob Reed came down to ask a few questions, the money was gone. So the hospital is clearly responsible. Oh, uh, did uh, 
Did Jill talk to Delia? I don't think so. Well, she intends to. I mean, if Dee needs any money, Jill will try and hurry things along with the insurance company. Otherwise, it'll take a week or two. No problem. No problem. Delia doesn't seem to know anything about it. I'm not even sure it was Frank's money. But that's not important now. No. And I... I understand you're trying not to answer my questions, and I understand why, but... I need to know. Johnny, you'll know when I know. But I'm not going to speculate. All right. I can say this much without misleading you. Up to now, the coma is nothing unusual, given the extent of Frank's injuries. But in a matter of hours, I'd like to see some change. The longer he stays under, the greater the cause for concern. You mean he could start coming around tonight? Hopefully, yes. Do, do, do you know where Pat is? Oh, I do. I sent him into my office to lie down on the couch for a while. Oh, thanks, thanks. The poor kid was out on his feet. Well, do you want him? No, oh, let him rest. Look, I have uh, one or two things I have to take care of. I'll, I'll stop in later, okay? Right. Look, um, hmm? would it help maybe if I, if I talk to him? Give it a try. I'll be on the floor if you need me. Uh, I want you to wake up now, Frank. Frank. It's okay, Dad. I'm not asleep. What time is it? 4 a.m. <laughs> Your grandson is um, seven hours old. <laughs> Have you been able to get any sleep yourself? Oh, we've been lying in the air, talking about you and the night you were born. And, uh, May went to sleep planning a christening party for your baby. I hope Delia won't mind. <laughs> when did Dee ever mind a party? Huh? Well, you know how some women are about their first babies. Mm. Well, Maeve and I solemnly swore to each other we wouldn't be interfering grandparents, and here we are planning your son's baptism. <laughs> well, Dee would have asked Mom to take over anyway, right? Well, Maeve was hoping she would. You know, it's probably not fair to Kathleen and those two beautiful little girls. But I can't help it. I, I feel this is my first grandchild. Mm. The first one named Ryan, anyway, huh? That's part of it. You know, after Maeve went to sleep, I lay awake thinking about my father. Shot down in his 30s because he was a good man, a good cop doing his duty. And I, I wished he were alive. Not just because my life would have been so different, but because I'd want him to know you. And I'd want him to see your child tonight. And I, I'd want him to know what I'd done and what you'd done. I want him to understand that a lot of the things he'd hoped for were finally happening. But it took two generations of Ryans to do it. And I... I would have wanted to say to him that what I haven't done, that what you don't manage to do, will still get done because now there's... there's another Ryan to keep on trying. <sighs> We're going to name him John. You don't have to do that. I know I don't have to. I want to. John for you, and Reed for Bob. John, Reed, Ryan. <sighs> Little John. Little Jim. Nine pounds, 11 ounces. No, that's not so little. <laughs> One of the things you did for us was to make very clear what was expected from us. There were rules. We knew what they were. 
There were standards, and we tried to measure up to them. I thought the best beginning I could give little John would be your name. As a reminder of everything I hope he grows to be. Thanks. Frank, wake up now. Little John needs you. And so do I. You know what I'm really sorry about? You know what? Your first impression of my aunt now. Well, I'm just not used to having my father made fun of. Of course not. Nell's not used to anyone telling her no. Well, don't you think it's just a little bit arrogant to come waltzing in here unannounced and then expect to be just handed a position on staff? Oh, well, she was led to believe that she... <laughs> oh, why am I doing this? I know you don't like her, and there's probably nothing I can do to change your mind, and there are hundreds of other things we can talk about. So why am I inflicting this on you? Well, I guess because you like her and you respect her and you want me to understand why. For as long as I can remember, Nell's been the person I admire most, with the possible exception of my grandfather. I know she's spoiled. She's the baby of the family. She's 12 years younger than my mother. And she's used to having her own way. But usually she deserves it. And she's the, she's the reason I'm a doctor. Really? Why? Because she shared it all with me. She'd, she'd come home from med school on vacations and spend hours showing me pictures in her, in her medical books and explaining things. <laughs> on my 10th birthday, she gave me a life-size plastic skeleton and helped me put it together. On my 12th birthday, she gave me a retired laboratory rat. And uh, on top of all that, she drove a convertible sports car with a top down. What happened to the rat? <laughs> he died of old age. Would you like another spritzer? Sure. I guess uh, in your family there was no avoiding being a doctor. Well, Jill managed. Well, your older sister, huh? The lawyer. I tell you, there was just exactly three reasons why I went into medicine. You sound so organized. <laughs> One, I wanted to. Two, my father wanted me to, and I, I do a lot of things because I want my father to approve of me. And three, I knew it would annoy Roger. I do a lot of things to annoy Roger. Why? Actually, because I, I don't like Roger very much. Oh. <laughs> well, I do a lot of things because I want your father to approve of me. Well, my father said something complimentary about you this morning. Really? Yeah, he said uh, you were very hardworking. Oh. <laughs> no, coming my, from my father, that's that's very high praise, really. Well, thanks for telling me. I like praise. Mm, we all do. <laughs> well, I do more than most people. I was an only child, and my, my parents thought everything I did was sensational. I mean, how would they know? <laughs> they never had anything to compare me with. I never, they're very gentle people, and never fight with each other. I never even heard my mother raise her voice. So, of course, they didn't like to scold me. What they did was sort of uh, encourage the, the good things. I didn't ignore the bad. And I like being encouraged more than I like being ignored, so I was good. And you got hooked on praise. When I was five years old, I climbed the mizzen mast on our catch because my grandfather said I was the best sailor of my age, he knew. And I wanted him to say it again. A catch? A sort of a sailboat. I grew up around boats. Uh, the only thing I ever wanted to be besides a doctor was the captain of a clipper ship. You know, and I think a clicker, clipper ships, I think of <laughs> like uh, sailing to China, Africa. Oh, yeah, that's right, in the 1850s. Around the Cape to the Orient and back with spices and tea and jade and silks. They were the fastest sailing vessels ever built, with three masts and full sails. <laughs> I used to go to sleep at night, reciting sails like poetry. Jibs and trysails and mainsails and topsails and 
royal souls and top gallant souls and sky souls and fore and main and mizzen. <laughs> you must think I'm out of my mind. No. Bucky, I, I think you're being very good to me. I think you realize that it's not easy for me to talk about myself. So you're trying to help me do that by talking about yourself, which isn't easy for you either. Oh, yeah. So I, I don't think you're out of your mind. I think you're my friend. You know how late it is. I better call Maeve. May I suggest something else? Go home. I'll be here for another hour or two, and Pat's on duty. Yeah, he stopped by a little while ago. Well, we'll call you if there's anything at all to report. I know I'm no help to Frank, but I'm... it makes me feel better to be here. You won't feel better in the morning. Come on, get some sleep. Yeah, maybe I should try. I, uh, I've been talking to him every 15 minutes or so. That's probably a good idea. I'll send Pat in a little while. Hi, Johnny. How is he? No change. Has Mary been around? No, she had some work over at campaign headquarters. She's probably home by now. Well, would you give her my love and tell her I'll see her tomorrow? Sure. Good night. Good How is he really? The same. Oh, uh, how was your evening? Oh, it was lovely. It was, it was really lovely. What do you think of Bucky Carter? Hmm? Oh, as a doctor, it's a bit too soon to tell. Uh, he's earnest, I'll say that for him. As a person, he's very likable. I think so, too. Good. So you don't think there'd be any problem? Well, how do you mean? Well, you know, in uh, having a social relationship with another intern. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, no, I don't think there's going to be any problem. In my experience, social relationships aren't that unusual around here. He's a very gentle, funny, hardworking person. Faith, I'm, I'm... Faith, it's all right. He's nice, sure, he's a nice kid, and, well, even if he weren't, it's none of my business, right? All I did was ask your opinion of a friend. Want to get some coffee? You shouldn't drink coffee this late at night. Don't lecture. Look, I have to stay with Frank for a while. Are you expecting some change? No, I wish I were. I felt bad for Johnny tonight. There's still some questions that are not answered. What Frank was doing in the hospital, where the money came from, how he fell. I know. And if he doesn't show some signs of coming around soon, we may not ever get the answers. Let's uh, go get the coffee, and then I'll sit with you for a while, okay? <laughs> 